I'd like to take just a few minutes to go over some of the potential challenges in becoming a beekeeper. Um, first and foremost, you need to get together with a, another group of like-minded individuals, such as a bee club or some type of bee association. We did that when we first started five years ago, and the bee club that we are affiliated with is 50 miles from our house, which is about an hour, so it's a two-hour round trip. The association was great, um, the club was great to get us started, and the classes that they gave were excellent, but nothing compares to hands-on. So having a mentor is a must, and for us, it didn't work out so well. Um, those that were willing to be mentors for us did live a substantial uh, distance away, so we never really had a mentor. We still don't have a mentor, and I suppose we could have taken the time to uh, try to find one locally, um, but shame on us, we didn't do that. So. Um, first and foremost, take a class, um, get as much knowledge as you can before starting beekeeping and even doing that, there's still a lot of things that um, you're only going to learn by experience. So having a mentor would have helped us greatly. Um, you can Google things, the internet's great for trying to find answers for things, but um, there's nothing like hands-on, having somebody right there in the moment, you open up a hive and inevitably in five years, um, there's been things that I've seen that uh, classes and watching videos really don't prepare you for and having somebody on hand that can say, oh yeah, I've experienced that before, I know what that is and how to deal with it, um, I'm sure that's invaluable. Um, second best to that would be, um, to learn from the best and forget the rest. And what I mean by that is the internet is a wonderful tool and it is filled with knowledge and knowledgeable people and it is also filled with know-it-alls. I would uh, try to avoid those people. There's a uh, saying in beekeeping and maybe it applies to other areas too. If you ask 10 beekeepers a question, you'll get 15 answers. And uh, it's funny, but it's true. So I would definitely recommend if you are using YouTube as a resource, there are three YouTubers that are my go-tos. Number one is Cayman Reynolds of Tennessee Bees. Anybody that's been in beekeeping for any amount of time knows who that is. And uh, he's got a lot of wonderful videos. He hasn't produced a lot of videos as of late because he's got his endeavor with the North American um, Honeybee Expo. And I'm sure that takes a lot of his time, but you can go back and watch some of his older videos. They're still just as valuable, still just as relevant. Um, the second person on YouTube I would recommend would be uh, David Burns. Um, and I really like David because he is just down to earth, open, honest, straightforward, um, and he's relatable. A um, little bit older than me, but... Uh, our life stories are very similar, and I, I can relate to that. He's got a lot of really good information. Um, he's uh, in Ohio, so not too far from me. And the third one I would recommend is Frederick Dunn. Um, very, very uh, knowledgeable as well. Great presenter of information, very thorough. So I would re recommend those three. Um, I've watched a lot of bee videos over the last five years. Um, those three, I think, are the best. I'd also remember that beekeeping is a hobby for most of us. Um, if you think you're gonna make a lot of money beekeeping, selling honey, selling bees, um, most of us are just maybe making enough money to sustain our hobby. Um, as you can see in the background here, these are our hives. We run Langstroth's. Um, that was is something else that if I had to go back, I would do differently. Langstroths are probably great for commercial beekeepers, but beekeeping is not for the faint of heart nor the weak of back. These hives get, uh, these boxes get very heavy with bees and honey, upwards of 60 pounds. Uh, I myself approaching 60. Um, they're very 
uh, heavy, very awkward, very bulky to handle. If I had to do it all over again, I would run probably long Langstroth hives um, or some type of long hive. It doesn't have to be a Langstroth. Um, again, I think that it's just more easy to handle, more manageable for the part-time beekeeper, the hobbyist, the hobby beekeeper. Um, again, these hives, these Langstroth hives are great for commercial beekeepers. It's a very uh, modular type system. And the other thing that I would um, not do, there's some advice that we got that I don't think was the best advice, was um, to run all mediums. I think that the traditional way that Langstroths are run are uh, deep brood boxes, um, medium brood boxes, and then, of course, shallow honey supers. I think that would have been better, um, better on my back and uh, just less, less strenuous uh, work. And just another point that it's called working the hives, and they call it working the hives for a reason because it is work. Um, I guess in a way there's, there's uh, this idea out there that you set up your hives and uh, the bees go to town and they make honey and you collect the honey and that's all there is to it. I've seen several television shows that uh, kind of make it seem that way, but that's not the case. It is work. Um, right now, the biggest threat to honeybees in North America is the Roa mite. And the Roa mite has been around for, uh, in North America for 40 years. And even prior to that, it was still work. There are things to do. There are pests to control, diseases to uh, look out for, um, and other things that you have to do to work the hives. Um, you have to watch for uh, swarming. Uh, that's the biggest thing is swarming. And just a, a word on swarming and probably a little controversial um, is the fact that swarming is the natural way that the bees reproduce themselves, they're going to do it. They are going to want to swarm and despite your best efforts, they will swarm. Um, and the controversial part for me is that we were taught that when we seen the signs of swarming to split the hives. And as you can see, uh, right now we have, uh, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six hives back there. Uh, my intention was only to have two to four hives. So um, obviously we split these hives. Uh, my advice would be to either let the bees swarm, which is the controversial part. Um, some will say that's not good animal husbandry. It's not good beekeeping. But if you're going to split the hives and not have the resources or the time to care for them properly, I think it would be better to let them swarm. The other alternative would be to split the hives and give the split to somebody. You could try to sell the split to somebody, but if there's somebody that you know that's interested in beekeeping um, or somebody that's currently doing beekeeping, I would give them the split um, if you can't handle um, additional hives. But those are um, several of the things that we learned in our first five years. Um, I would also say, and if, if you can, Make all the mistakes you can early on, learn from those mistakes, and try not to repeat them. Hey everybody, Future Eddie here. I just wanted to jump in to say that this video is not meant to discourage or dissuade anybody from becoming a beekeeper. Uh, quite the contrary. I would like to encourage you, if you're interested in becoming a beekeeper, whether it's for a hobby, a sideliner, or a full-time profession, um, we only get one go around at this life, and if that's your dream, I say go for it. Um, everybody should lead the best life that they can. Um, that said, I also want to uh, give a little disclaimer. The opinions in this video are mine and mine alone. I do reference other beekeepers in this video, and I'm not inferring in any way that uh, the practices that I have in place or the things that I've said in this video uh, are things that they would condone or endorse or teach. Um, get out there and watch those videos and uh, listen to those guys and their advice. And uh, I really appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate your comments, I read them, and I look forward to uh, what you have to say in the comments. If you're a beekeeper and you've been keeping bees and you have some advice for me, uh, whether it's criticism or not, I appreciate reading it. 
And if you're interested in becoming a beekeeper and you have questions for me and would like me to answer them via videos or email, um, leave a comment as well. Thanks again for watching and back to the video. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you found value in this video, please share, please subscribe, uh, like, comment. Um, please comment even if you have comments that are different uh, or controversial. I shouldn't say that. If you have comments that are opposing viewpoints, I guess would be the right way. Help me, uh, educate me. Uh, again, five years experience, that's not a lot. No mentor. Um, so I'm just learning too, still learning, hopefully to continue to learn. And uh, hope you all enjoyed it. See you on the next one.